The reform of the common fisheries policy has opened up many opportunities for new ideas to devolve responsibility down to the stakeholders and to end the top-down micromanagement from Brussels that has bedeviled the sector for decades. We're dealing with certain known parameters. Firstly, the Commission are going to publish their draft proposals round about May. Secondly, the main thrust of the reform will be centred around an ecosystem approach and maximum sustainable yields. Thirdly, there is a clear determination to end the obscenity of discards. Fourth, against the background of a diminishing budget, subsidies for fisheries are also bound to diminish. Fifth, there must be an improvement to fishery science and better coordination of activities between fishermen and scientists. Six, and this is the final and most uh, crucially important point, Mrs. Damanaki has repeatedly said that she is determined to regionalize fisheries management and to provide a basket of options for day-to-day -day management from which the member states can choose. She has also repeatedly stated that she is fighting a rearguard action against her own legal services who regard regionalization as a form of re-nationalization and therefore a breach of the treaties. We need to bolster our support for Mrs. Damanaki in this respect. Maria Damanaki accepts that the top-down approach has failed and that any meaningful reform has got to involve the fishermen and scientists if it's to have any chance of success. The current muddle of centralised bureaucratic controls involving total allowable catches, quotas, effort limitation, days at sea, technical measures such as mesh sizes and a host of other regulations have driven our fishermen to distraction without achieving their core objective of maintaining fish stocks and securing jobs in the industry. Indeed, micromanagement from Brussels has had the opposite effect, with over 80% of Europe's fish stocks now in a critical state of over-exploitation and with tens of thousands of jobs lost at sea and on shore over the last 20 years. The big question is what shape should any new decentralised management policy take? The Commissioner has ruled out the International Transfer of Rights, ITRs, between member states, but stated that she's happy to see such rights transferred within fishing basins. Now, I support her in this. The transfer of rights on an international basis would encourage some of Europe's biggest and richest fishing companies to snap up all of the rights and licenses in, say, the North Sea. Now, with poor returns and tough times ahead, I can tell you that many Scottish skippers would be willing sellers to wealthy Spanish companies. Soon we would see the Spanish fleet fishing around our shores and their catches would be landed in Spain, destroying thousands of jobs in our key ports and harbours like Peterhead, Fraserburgh and Lerwick. So I am delighted that Commissioner Damanaki has nailed her colours firmly to the mast on ITRs, stating clearly that rights will be tradable only within member states and not at EU level. That means we need to find a new management option that can protect and maintain relative stability, bring about an end to discards, achieve the necessary ecosystem and environmental standards that we believe are crucial to provide for a sustainable future, and at the same time ensure a commercially profitable livelihood for the fishermen. Now you may begin to think that we'll need Harry Potter and his magic wand to make this happen, but in fact I think that we may be able to find the solutions a bit closer to home. I think that Client Earth and the Marine Conservation Society may have hit upon a system that fits the bill with their highly innovative 
fishing credit system. As you know, the system proposes a new type of mixed catch quota together with the identification of sea basins or regionalized ecosystems around the EU for management purposes with each species within that basin being given a value of a particular number of credits. Fishermen will then be allocated an annual credit allowance. Credits can be bought and sold between fishermen but only within that specific sea basin. Fishermen can choose to catch whatever they like so long as they do not exceed their annual credits allowance. Fish in recovery programs like cod will obviously have a higher credit rating than say haddock so fishermen will be incentivized to target haddock and try to avoid cod in order to maintain a healthy credit balance. There will be no need to discard or to worry about going over quota for a species. The beauty of this system is that it would eliminate almost all technical regulations giving fishermen a lot more flexibility and freedom to operate as they choose. Everything caught will have to be landed and recorded, including most bycatch species. Immature fish will carry a much higher credit value than mature fish from the same stock, again incentivizing fishers to avoid catching undersized or immature fish. The system will be enhanced by additional surveillance on all vessels including CCTV. Compliance and best practice will be rewarded with extra credits. Now we've seen in Scotland how there has been an enthusiastic uptake of the Scottish Government's catch quota system which incentivised fishermen to fit CCTV to their vessels and ban discards in exchange for a little extra quota. So we have a role model, if you like, which clearly indicates that there will be a willingness of the sector to embrace any new system which brings simplicity into fisheries management while ensuring a sustainable fishery by incentivizing and rewarding fishermen for best practice. The fishing credit system also preserves the essential concept of relative stability within the sea basin ensuring that only fishers with traditional rights to fish in the zone are allowed to continue to do so. As ever, of course, the devil will be in the detail, and the demons in this particular package will relate to the credit values given to each species of fish in any particular sea basin. That will be a horrendously complex job, the outcome of which will decide the future profitability or otherwise of the sector as well as the sustainability of the stocks. Nevertheless, devolved management will mean that scientists and fishermen within the specific sea basin will decide on the credit values to be given to each species. Their recommendations will then be transmitted to the European Commission who will, together with the European Parliament and the Council of Fisheries Ministers, uh, give their approval and monitor the implementation and success of the system. The bottom-up approach will become a reality. On that basis, I believe that the fisheries credit system could provide the answer to future management plans for the sector, and I'm delighted that Mrs. Damanaki has already stated that she likes the idea and intends to include it as one of the options available in her proposed basket of management options. Thank you.